All right. Apologize for the technical difficulty. We'll just go ahead and continue with what you see there on the screen. Uh, as a brief overview, the 2021 GTR is separated into three parts. Part one is development process with key terms, definitions, and procedures. Part two, design criteria for developing FD DOT toll site design plans and calculations. Part three is plans production, defines the sheet number and component requirements for each toll site design. This part also describes the level of design such as preliminary, complete, and final, in which the middle phase each component is required. We dedicate time and effort every year to implement comments and lessons learned from construction, design consultants, tolling vendors, and contractors. The GTR is a living document which is influenced by changes in construction means and methods, toll system technology, governing codes, and infrastructure of manufacturers. The GTR is relatively young and therefore it will only be years old as of July 21st. There have been several notable updates since the 2020 GTR. These updates include reducing site infrastructure, such as the screen wall and the E6 reader ground mounted enclosure, adding a new TEC vendor, Conduit, and eventually the roadside tolling cabinet, or also known as RTC. Some of you may recognize the photo on the right as the E6 ground mounted enclosure, which has been removed from the 2021 GTR. There are several key terms which will be referenced throughout the presentation today. The GTR, the General Tolling Requirements, TEB, an acronym for Tolling Equipment Building, and TEC, an acronym for the Toll Equipment Contractor. The GTR criteria now supports three TECs, Conduit, Transcore, and Raytheon Toll Systems. The RTC, or Roadside Tolling Cabinet Design, requires new infrastructure. The OCC or Outdoor Communications Cabinet and the PDF or Power Distribution Frame are only required for the RTC design. The next two slides will highlight some significant updates implemented into the part one of the GTR. These updates include adding key terms, design responsibilities for the RTC, as well as clarifications to GTR deviation submittal processes. Some of you may recognize the photo on the right as the first cantilever toll gantry, which is located along the Turnpike Main Line, Griffin Road, northbound entrance ramp. At this time, the RTC design has not been installed in the field to validate the design, operations, and maintenance aspects. We are currently implementing a ramp pilot project to vet the on-site and off-site power designs currently shown in the 2021 GTR exhibits. From this pilot project, we plan to modify the current design criteria based on lessons learned identified in the field by the contractor in CEI. Through parallel efforts, toll systems will modify their existing TEC contracts to include each vendor's RTC solution support to support their toll system. At this time, does anyone have any questions for part one? Uh, I'm, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any comments or questions in the chat window. Hey, James, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, this is an amp. Uh, so how does the 2021, so what contracts does this apply? I'm assuming this does not apply to all contracts, right? So no, no. Walk through. Okay. Right. So this this will only apply to contracts once it's published. It'll apply to contracts that are either in a negotiation or have not been given a an NTP. So right now the and that that's for are, design design negotiation, right? Correct. the uh, The current 2020 GTR would apply to any design projects or PD&E projects currently in, in development. Yeah, but what, what about design builds? So you won't apply to design builds that were led before, right? 
Right. So the 2020 GTR would, would apply to those as well right now. Okay. We just need, may, need to clarify that. So when does 2021 apply? Would it be starting July? Any contracts, right? Design bill contracts. What's the timing? Uh, James, do you mind if I um, speak up to that point? Sure, go ahead. The 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 RFP is going to dictate which version of the GTR to you. So it'll be the version of the GTR that was available at the time that the RFP was advertised. Okay, thanks. And not just so you understand that that process has been ongoing for for years now. We we've been following that same procedure. The only time it changes is when uh, there's newer criteria or there's a benefit to the contractor or designer to implement newer criteria, and then we allow them to do so at their at their own discretion. Maybe, James, it would also be helpful for this 2021 version. We haven't published it yet, right? We're seeking feedback. What's the plan for publishing? And then when we do, it'll come with an implementation memo, and it'll probably have a sentence or two about that, right? Correct. Yep. So this is sort of a preview of the 2021, which has not yet been published. Correct. And not that that address your, your, your question and concern? Yes, sir. Yeah, good, good to go. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, not hearing any other questions or comments at this time, we'll go ahead and move to part two. Through lessons learned from recent pd &E projects, it is crucial that any proposed toll site located in the pd &E alternative. I'm sorry? It was just feedback, James, just keep going. Oh, okay, thank you. Through lessons learned from pd &E, recent pd &E projects, it is crucial that any proposed toll site located in the pd &E alternative development are constructible and meet GT. GTR criteria. We have found that having a tolling consultant familiar with GTR criteria on the pd &E team improves viable alternatives while reducing the number of technical meetings. Through coordination with construction, CEI, and contractors, we have removed the screen wall from all toll sites this infrastructure removal reduces construction time, removes below ground coordination between the screen wall foundation and conduits, and removes two technical special revision sections that are associated with those shop drawings. The highlighted screen wall shown in the photo will no longer be required for future toll sites using the 2021 GTR. GTR Section 250 was reorganized to include the third TEC vendor, Conduit, and the toll equipment wind areas and structural loading values. A single gantry design must accommodate all three toll system layouts. All three TEC vendor layouts must use the same quantity of left and right oriented gearboxes for the accessible gantry. The RTC site layout is shown for reference. This site is significantly narrower, 16 feet wide, versus the 24 foot 6 wide currently needed for the toll equipment building layout. The RTC will provide by the TEC vendors, all other infrastructure will be by the contractor. So just the cabinet will be provided by the TEC and everything else will be provided by the roadside contractor. This design will eliminate a toll equipment building permit and associated shop drawings. The generator will be combined with a base fuel tank since the power loads have been significantly reduced. The primary power service 
that each RTC toll site will only require 200 amps rather than 400 amps for toll livability toll sites. The maintenance pull-off area has been reduced to one maintenance vehicle width, allowing for two vehicles to be parked in parallel safely behind a concrete barrier. We are developing three standard toll site equipment slab designs for the RTC toll sites. One designed for the generator with a base fuel tank, one designed with the RTC and OCC together, and one designed with just the RTC. As you can see from the photos, the photo on the left is a generator with a base fuel tank, and the photo on the right is the standard generator and the separate fuel tank. We've added the following electrical criteria for the RTC toll sites. The photo shown is an example of a PDF for the ITS system. The RC, RTC PDF will be similar. However, it will not require concrete posts for support. GTR section 242.10 was moved to GTR section 232.7. GTR section 232.7 was reorganized to accommodate the RTC and TEB standby generators criteria for more efficient organization. The electrical waste raceway components or reorganized to accommodate the RTC and TB's toll sites more effectively. The photo on this slide shows the correct wireway to wire trough connection. Top penetrations are not permitted due to maintenance issues we have found in the field. Due to the consolidation of the building demolition, renumbering of the TEB mechanical section, was required. The photo on this slide shows the most recent HVAC condensing units on a support structure frame. Due to emerging 5G technology, we have added new language to identify the separation requirements to mitigate interference between the toll system and the 5G equipment. These sections related to CCTV camera criteria are reorganized to accommodate the RTC and TEB toll sites more efficiently. The geotechnical criteria used to be separated into various components. We have now combined them into one section that addresses all the geotechnical criteria for the gantry, site, RTC and toll from the building. At this time, does anyone have any questions for part two? James, a uh, quick question. Is the RTC application only going to be uh, considered for ramps or both mainline and ramp scenarios? James, that's an excellent question. And right now it's it's being considered on a pilot project for ramps. Um, our intent is to use them on ramps because of the uh, the restrictions that the cabinet has for the vendors. It can only handle up to three lanes and two shoulders in a single movement per cabinet. And so until we have a good handle on the reliability and maintenance aspects of these cabinets, um, we're we're going to vet them through the pilot project to make sure we've worked out all the bugs before we move them to a, a higher volume mainline approach. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anyone else with any questions? James, if I could expound on that a little bit to that response, the um, we do have some exhibits in the draft 2021 GTR that would allow its use on express lane only facilities as well. Uh, 
Correct. Yep. Okay, seeing no more comments in the chat window, uh, we'll move on to part three. Some CAD modifications were made to create greater flexibility during the design development. And this will help with the CAD compliance. Um, for some of the CAD files that are created for tolling, we know that there's not a standard for that. So we're trying to create some greater flexibility for, for the CAD compliance. We've added the RTC and conduit tolling requirements to GTR part three as well, listed in these sections. Through coordination with central office, we've also developed the toll site component pay items rather than the outdated lump sum pay item approach. This will help with the um, costs in identifying the components at each toll site. Through coordination with central office, we're also developing RTC toll site component pay items to support the pilot project and any future designs. And that'll be an ongoing process until we get it finalized. At this time, does anyone have any questions for part three? Hearing none, we'll, we'll move on to the last part of the presentation. We are continually seeking process and procedural or design improvements to meet or exceed the department's vision, enhance the final view, and move the needle per the secretary's directive. We have made significant improvements in the shop drawing submittal review process. We have separated the tolling shop drawings into critical versus non-critical. And over the last 12 months, this has contributed to the reduction of shop drawing review time by over 33%. We are also continuing to standardize the toll site infrastructure and design. <coughs> two items that would normally require a shop drawing to the department's approved products list. We have coordinated with the gantry manufacturers and the toll equipment building manufacturer to determine if there are any design improvements which can expedite fabrication, installation, or construction. We developed an accessible gantry design revision, which reduces roadway closure and installation time by 75%. We have also implemented design improvements in the accessible gantry exhibits based on coordination with gantry fabricators. Some of these changes have reduced fabrication time as well. Through coordination with central office, we have created developmental standard plans for seven toll site medium barrier schemes, which may accommodate express lines or mainline tolling projects. These developmental standard plans will be available later this year. Also through coordination with central office, we have created two unique tolling items in the ebook specifications and assigned them their own pay items. These specifications of pay items are available now and they're the toll header curve and conduit. We have responded to all the industry comments provided during the review period and implemented those that were applicable, as you can see from the list provided on the slide. This concludes our presentation, and I now open it up for any final questions or comments. I would, however, um, just remind everybody there are two James Beverly's in the DOT email system. And um, just don't forget to include my middle initial in my email. Uh, otherwise, it may go to the James Beverly and District 7's right-of-way department. 
James, we have a question in the chat. Um, and the question is, what is the process to be considered for a pilot project for the RTC? Right, and, and right now, and Christina, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe right now it is uh, management determination of pilot projects. Once we've got the pilot project uh, established and all the design criteria vetted, uh, then I think it becomes uh, something that's determined during pd &E phases. That's correct, James. At this point, it's it's a, a management decision. But uh, if there are suggestions of locations and um, uh, you know providing the recommended uh, benefits or reasons why it's uh, critical to that particular project, then you know we can take that under advisement. It's definitely something we're we're very interested in and and um, you know anxious to um, you know get get uh, results and and understand uh, the ins and outs of the maintenance and operations of it and you know adjust however we need and implement further. Hey James, this is Pat. Hey, I'm sorry, go ahead, Annette. Oh, go ahead, Pat. Um, I was just going to comment and emphasize back on, on slide number seven, James, was um, the, the GTR for design is um, is re requiring a, a, tolls, um, a tolls designer, a site designer that would have experience with this to be in the pd &E stage. And I just wanted to emphasize that to everybody because um, it's very important uh, to, to have somebody with experience in order to uh, uh, incorporate this into the pd &E plans. Um, we're getting plans in that uh, are going back and forth several times just due to, due to the fact that the, that the uh, engineers that are uh, preparing these pd &E, uh, plans just you know they just don't have the experience as uh, in, in designing their toll site so I just wanted to uh, make it everybody aware that we will be requiring that for future uh, pd and &E, um, consultants thanks go ahead and that no hi thanks uh, Pat uh, Christina and the team thank you thank you guys for uh, being open, I saw the shop join chart, and I think CSI, but I think a good collaboration. I think there's some great ideas from, you know, design build teams and the contractors, and I think Turnpike's been very receptive to it, and I think those are all the things that we got to do to continue to, you know, fine-tune what we deliver and what it costs. So, uh, so kudos, kudos to all of you. Uh, I guess the topic du jour two years ago was toll buildings, right? And mold and so is that can we solve that? I haven't heard any, so I'm assuming it's all good. Uh, I guess the what is that wooden studs with the metal studs and so on. Could you just speak briefly to that? Uh now my my understanding is what we did since then was we've We've added some criteria in the TSB section for the toll equipment building, and that requires power to be at the site before the building is delivered. And, and therefore, you don't have this, the building sitting on site for six months to a year at a time before power is engaged and the ACs are, are turned on. And that has, from my, my understanding, that has immensely improved uh, any mold issues with the buildings. And James, we're adding in dehumidifiers too, is that correct? Yes, and so uh, the dehumidifier is was added. Uh, it's not in the criteria, it's an EOR option. Uh, and they do the design to add that so that uh, the period
period of time between the building being accepted by the department and when the TEC comes in to add their equipment, which would uh, create the full heat load that's needed for the AC design. In that interim period, the AC units were short cycling because they were not um, being tasked with the full heat load until they told when it was installed. So that, that has helped as well. Uh, James? Uh, if I may add to that. Certainly. Um, as a team, we had also reached out to the prefabricators for the buildings and got some input from them uh, regarding the mold issue and uh, made some changes in RTSPs to make it more flexible also. So are we still requiring wooden studs, or I guess it's saw the saw, but I guess most people are going to metal studs, right? The the wooden studs are still there, as well as the plywood. Well, I guess most people are migrating from that, so. You know, I guess some other toll authorities use a different design, so and I don't know what the cost difference is. But anyway, no big deal. Yeah. But Anat, we're open to CSIs, and I think we're certainly looking at do we need toll equipment buildings at all locations, or will a cabinet do? We're doing some pilot projects, as James mentioned. So, you know, I think we're looking at other options to see what's truly needed in these toll equipment buildings. That's based on industry right. feedback to us. So, right. is there is there I guess is there prefab buildings available, or is that is that something these guys you know, that everything has to be custom made? There uh, are metal buildings available. I think they use them. Um, we haven't used them down here, but we've been reaching out to kind of other tolling agencies in the Southeast US to kind of see what options are available to us. So, I mean, that investigation is ongoing. Yeah, okay, yeah, this makes, you know, obviously there's a scale of efficiency, right? There's prefab and sort of more cookie cutter versus, anyway. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we, we were, we're considering the heat and humidity that levels that we get in Florida and kind of in the southeast U.S. because no point in comparing ourselves to Arizona, for example, but, you know, Texas and the, the southeast kind of makes sense to compare with that. I, I agree. I know James is on the line. Now, James, I know you've been doing a lot of full work on the main line. Any what's your thoughts, James Westbrook? Uh, the only the only other question that I really had uh, for James was that um, I was just kind of curious. One of the things that kind of seems to be the cart before the horse is the uh, test and balancing of the AC units. We tend to run into this on every job where criteria currently requires us to do that prior to TEC coming in and doing their work, et cetera. And then basically what that does is creates an issue with being able to obtain the proper heat loads when we do the test and balance. So we'll go through, do the test and balance, submit our report, and then we're getting comments back on the fact that, well, how did you apply the heat loads? And so there, there just seems to be a little bit of a disconnect there still uh, with the test and balancing process uh, that just kind of ends up, you know, kind of becoming a, a little bit of a cobweb there we get hung up in. Um, so I'm just kind of curious if the 2021 is, modifying any of that language or that sequencing um, so that, uh, you know, we don't run into that cart before the horse type issue. James, we are looking into that and, and that's something that we'll definitely address before we publish the 2021. I know that's been a recent issue on ETA projects, but, but I do agree with you that it doesn't make sense to, because the test and balance that you deliver isn't the, really the complete test and balance. Right. Yep. I, Fully understand that, and we we definitely need to fix that. 
Okay. And then, and then I guess just kind of on that same thought process with timing of like the 2021 GTR, um, it sounds like some of this criteria that you're putting in the 2021 GTR uh, correlates with some of your pilot projects. So are you waiting on results of that pilot project before you actually publish the GTR? No, we're, we're going to go ahead and publish. Our intent is to publish at the end of May, early June, maybe. Okay. Uh, because we're trying to make sure that we get the developmental specs from central office so that we can clean out the the conflicts that we have currently in the GTR, the draft. Uh, once that's cleaned out, then we'll publish. And then any addendums or changes that would happen later in the year, that would be a reflection of the pilot project or any other criteria that may have changed. We would just issue an addendum. Okay. James, um, I'll, ex I'll expand a little bit on that as well. So the pilot project, as James mentioned, is it, it may be quite a while before we get the information back um, uh, from that project. Um, as Christina had mentioned earlier, though, there may be instances during a project that you're working on now where you could see that the uh, um, the environment was was right for a tolling cabinet that we would consider in those cases uh, prior to any any uh, pilot project. Um, so, um, yeah, so that that's a that's the approach we're taking on it right now. So, um, James Westbrooks, I, if the comment you made earlier, um, if, just so we don't forget about that during the um, the revisions we're making now, can you would you be sure to send that comment in um, so that we again so that we have it? Uh, I know what this is being recorded, but maybe you can send that in as well. Sure. Yeah, I can send James an email on that. That's no problem. All right. Thanks. Thanks, James. Uh, and then um, Chris Bromo just entered a, a comment into the. Chat <clears throat> mentioned developmental design standard for median barrier with pull boxes. Are the additional developmental standards for other roadway barriers with GFRP reinforcement, single slope, shoulder barrier, regular median barrier, or through the toll site envelope? Okay, so here's the, the standard developmental plans that are currently uh, being reviewed in industry uh, forum, as it were. Those are just for the median, for the loophole boxes in the median. So we have developed seven schemes or configurations, as it were, that those median pull boxes can be uh, configured for, whether it's a express lane or a mainline toll site. And so with that being said, the Developmental standard plans are intended to show where the rebar goes, the size of the rebar, and all that. So you don't have to keep designing that every time and putting that into the plans. That's that's the intent for the median barrier. The uh, shoulder barrier that you talked about, that's still GFRP through the toll site. James, if I may expand on that a little bit, the uh, standard index 521 allows us to just substitute out the steel reinforcement for GFRP without any real redesign effort there on those shoulder outside barrier walls. However, the, like you just said, the median was um, an issue because it was having to be custom designed from each project. Does anyone else have any comments or questions or uh, anything you see that maybe we could look at or you feel that we've missed? Well, Andy, it done? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, hearing none, then we, let's um, I guess let's close this out. But 
I just want to emphasize, you know, our, our plan is to publish this by July, um, at least. And um, so if you have any additional comments, the sooner you get them in, the sooner we can put them in the 2021 GTR and get this out on the street. So, um, you know, with that said, um, I just wanted to thank everybody for participating today. Um, I would like to thank James and his group also um, for for all that, that they've done to put this together. So um, uh, uh, thank you. And um, I guess we can sign off now unless there's anything else anybody needs to say. Pat, I just, in terms of timing, just want to um, um, be clear with the with the timing. I think in in reality, we would will need um, you know need your comments by the end of this month. I think I heard James say that you know we would like to publish the end of May if possible. Um, but you know you can submit comments at any time, and um, you know we'll keep keep track of those and um, you know as James mentioned we'll have the the publication of the GTR and we do have options if if we um, if we feel it's necessary to issue addendums um, if if needed before the next annual update but um, but I think you know while it's fresh in everybody's mind it'd be good to have have comments uh, by the end of the month and then we can um, review those and then see how to incorporate them. Christina, Pat, this is Alani. Can I add something? Uh, I know that uh, we would entertain uh, people's ideas for the RTC if it makes sense, but I also want to point out that we do not yet have a contract with the TECs for providing the RTCs. So probably projects that are currently in construction, we do not have a mechanism to acquire RTCs. And that would, um, you know, ameliorate how fast we can entertain any changes. Good morning, this is Marlene. I just wanted to ask, do we get a preliminary copy so we can see, uh, I guess, review so we can have a better idea of what we may want to suggest? Yes, Marlene, we send out a um, a GTR, draft GTR for industry review and ACEC review uh, for a, a two-week period. Uh, that was earlier this year. Um, we usually send those out to the the head of FTBA with the NOTH, and we send it to the president of ACEC. So if you could, if you could get with them to find out who who needs to include you in that review period, that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Our intent is not to leave anybody out in the review. We just, there are so many people. Uh, in one of the lists, there was 1,400. Uh, when we submit this internally for review, there's over 300 people that have a chance to review it. So I apologize if you were left out on the list, uh, but that was not our intent. Yeah, and if, if you need to get a hold of James um, for that, a copy of that, you can just send him an email and he'll send one to you. Okay. Well, I guess uh, if we don't have any more questions or comments, um, again, we we appreciate uh, everybody's attendance, and um, and we look forward to getting this GTR out. Everybody have a good day and good rest of the week. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.